Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take a Bath Productions. Today we're going to do a video and show you how to install a PL259 connector onto a piece of LMR400. Any of these style cables are all the same size, so the procedure is exactly the same. Okay, first thing you're going to do, I kind of like to hold them side by side like this. And the first cut, I kind of go between these two ridges right here. This cut goes all the way through to the center conductor. Make sure you're using a nice sharp knife and be careful not to cut the center conductor while you're doing this. Because if you do, then it's not going to work very good. Now, of course, I'm rolling this around. If you got a big long piece of cable, that's not going to work. So the solution is to kind of roll the knife around it then. And you can kind of feel when you're there, maybe. Not quite through. I'm going to keep rolling it around just for the sake of the camera because it's easier for me. We might be there now. Yep. Okay. Get rid of that one. The second one I kind of go down here so that it's kind of in this area. And this one only goes through the first jacket there to the braid. You don't want to cut the braid off. You want to keep the braid. So if you're not all the way through, a lot of times to keep from cutting the braid, I'll go this way. That way you can kind of split it like this. Well, maybe. It's being stubborn. Once you get a bite. There we go. Now it'll tear. And I didn't cut the braid at all. Alright. Now also, I kind of like to put some flux on there. I know there's guys that say that you can do this without any solder at all, but I'll tell you, I don't trust that out in the weather with corrosion and all that stuff. I would rather it be soldered. That's just me, my personal preference. Now if you wanted to, you could take a Dremel tool and kind of clean this area up. Might make the solder stick a little better. You probably don't have to do this, but it's definitely not going to hurt anything. Now, kind of put that on carefully so that you, oh, I, I, one thing that you definitely want to look for before you put this on is look in this area and make sure you don't have any little stray wire strands that are coming over and touching the center pin because if you do, it's going to be a short and then that's going to be that. One other thing, this is obviously a short piece of cable, but before you put that on, make sure you put that on, otherwise you're going to be taking it apart or cutting it off. Alright, well, something's wrong. Okay, we're back. Yeah, I had a little bit of a technical difficulty. That was a This is a used connector just uh, for the video purpose, and there was a piece of solder stuck in the middle there that I couldn't push that through, so I had to deal with that. Okay, so we're back fixed again. So as I was saying, here, let me re-put the flux on there, I probably... Okay. Uh, yeah, slowly push this on and kind of make sure you don't disturb that braid because if you do, it's not going to screw on very well and then basically screw it on. This won't hurt anything right here. 
Just gets it down a little farther. All right. Make sure you see the braid through these holes. See the braid, see the braid. It's there everywhere. And it wouldn't hurt a thing to put a little bit more flux in there. Kind of help it go down. Now what I normally like to do, I'm using a soldering iron. You have to have a really hot soldering iron. Otherwise you're going to need a gun or even a torch would work. But a torch kind of tends to heat things up a lot. So I'm just using a, a soldering iron. It, it, this one does get pretty hot. So I usually like to hold that on there for a good 20, 30 seconds, you know, to kind of preheat the connector. You won't have to do this on all of them, just the first one, you know, because the connector's cold. I think it's getting there. Oh yeah, she's getting there. And like I said, when you've got a long piece of coax, you just kind of have to fight with it to get to get it to turn around. So these holes should be facing up is the best way. See how it's kind of concaved right there? That's what you want. And then the next one, it should be pretty hot, so I don't have to hold it on there quite as long. It's even good if you've got a second person handy. I never do. I always have to struggle with it, but if you do, they can hold it for you while you're trying to solder that. That one doesn't want to give me a concave, but it's still going to work. That kind of did a little bit. There we go. Got all four of those done. Yeah. I put this piece of plastic here to keep from messing up my desk. Oh, just ignore that part, okay? And just solder the middle. When you solder this, try not to get the solder here on the outside or it's going to make that center pin too big to go into the SO239. So try to keep that flat on the outside, if you can. I think we got it. Yep. I'll be right back. Get some dikes. Kind of cut that off. And you can take the Dremel and kind of clean it up. Get any of the flux off of there. And the burnt plastic in my case. And that's it. That's how to install a PL259. Of course, I already had this on the cable. You didn't see me just put that on there. Now, the last thing I always do is this. 
get your meter and check it. Make sure it's not shorted out. And make sure it's got continuity. First thing you do, check it for shorts. Make sure the meter's working. No shorts. Now check for continuity. We got ground. There's your ground. And there's your center. There we go. And that's it. Guys, hope this video has helped. If it has, click the like button. If you feel so inclined, click the subscribe button. Every once in a while I have videos popping up of this nature. And I appreciate you watching. 73.